to license them. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a 1-64 to scale Corgi Juniors Citroen Dion produced from 1973 to 1980. I believe it had a fold away cabrio top which has been lovingly rubbed away on this one. I'll make it black in the makeover and I'll clean up the car paint it and do some detailing and a wheel swap and it should look as good as new when it's done. Let's put it in the bench vise and take this one apart. I had to use my center punch today because these rivets are like manhole covers. They're massive and there's no way to get in there unless I gave it a little help and this just centers my drill bit and try as I might and I alternated front and back really couldn't make a dent in these things so I brought in a little more firepower let's go titanium it's actually a size larger too because of the the diameter of these and that was much more successful so moving forward I popped the plastic base off and suffered a little casualty here on the front screw hole clip. I'll show you that in a moment because it's an easy repair. Terrible color for an interior. It looks plastic. We'll try to fix that up. And the glass comes out. There is no rear window in any of these models. It's not a defect. It's just not there. So everything's in good condition. This is one of those models where only one of the two posts can be drilled out. In this case, it's going to be in the front. And in the back is just too small. It's a totally different size. But I'll score it and just put a little divot in there. So at the reassembly stage, you can take a drop of uh, super glue gel and a screw head and it'll hold just fine. Here's my mini repair. I just cut a little piece of styrene to fix the split on the plastic base. And you would be amazed with a little bit of super glue once that sets up and I give it a very light sanding and some paint. It is just indestructible. Good as new. Into the paint stripper, as always, I like to dunk mine instead of pour in the gel on top. I think it's more economical. This just takes the minimum amount. And I'll seal it in this little dollar store box, and that keeps the fumes in. I don't know, maybe that makes it work a little faster, but more importantly, it keeps the fumes out of my hobby room. And while science is doing its thing, I take a, a few moments with some hot soapy water, as always, and clean it up for sanitary purposes. I've got to handle this, and I don't know where it's been, and also gives me a better look at the windshield to see what kind of condition it's in. As always, I'll give it a treatment with some wet, dry sandpaper, and the ever-present Pledge Revive It. It's a clear floor polish. And that gives a brilliant clear shine to my plastic windshield and also good coating for extra long life. The Citroën 2CV, French De Chevaux Vapeur or two steam horses is an air-cooled front-engine, front-wheel drive economy car, and it was introduced at the 1948 Paris Mondial de l'Automobile and manufactured by Citroën for the model years 1948 to 1990. 
The 2CB has a combination of innovative engineering and utilitarian, straightforward metal bodywork. It's not made to look beautiful, it's practical. Initially, it was corrugated for added strength without the added weight. And the 2CV featured low cost, simplicity of overall maintenance, and easily serviced air cooled engine, low fuel consumption, and an extremely long travel suspension that offered a soft ride and a light off-road capability. Mine is cleaning up very well and the bare metal detail always involves some wire brushing and some steel wool application. No real bad defects here and I didn't find any casting lines that needed to be removed but I did smooth over a couple of edges with my diamond files and here's where I'll give it a final once over See the different texture on the roof that's made to look like a canvas material. Before I shoot the primer, I'm just masking off the front grill. There's so much detail here, it's just going to save me a little bit of time after the paint work of trying to remove it all. It's much easier just to pull off a piece of masking. I hit it with the Tamiya White Primer in this case. And I have decided after a little bit of Google Images research and the varied palette of colors to go with a light blue on this one. Most of them are yellow with the black top. So here's a little variety for today. And I think this looks kind of sharp. Let's do away with that red one-piece interior and I'll hit that with some matte black. Off comes the single piece of masking tape with my scalpel tool. And you'll see what I mean. I may pull it up into a little bit better light for you. And now I don't need to grow out all of that detail work. And I've decided today, with the scalpel knife, to scrape away the paint. It's still kind of tacky. This is about 15 minutes after the paint job. A couple of coats of the blue. And I thought I'd experiment with this. Instead of trying to paint chrome on with a brush or a Molotow chrome pen, I'm going to just take it off. And this worked famously well. I was really pleased with it. And if I made a little mistake, I could just touch it up with some blue, but in this case, I did not. So everything that I thought should be chrome, door handles, the front grill, the back bumper, the headlights are now exposed, came out great. So I'll do that again in the future. If I can offer you a tip for masking jobs, and I'm going, to, I'm preparing to paint this canvas rollback top black. I do the fine masking along the edges with this proper Tamiya masking tape. It's made for this. It's a modeling tape, and it's low stickiness, and it's fairly pliable too, meaning you can actually run this along a rounded edge and curve it a little bit. As in the case right here, I need to pull it back and then just run it. It goes down a little bit. I'm using my fingernail and later a toothpick just to make sure it's snug and tight. along the paint line. So that was only a couple of minutes. And once I've used the Tamiya tape, which is a little more expensive than just the masking tape or painter's tape, here's the toothpick application. I'm going to use my cheap old wide masking tape just to cover off the rest of the car. 
and the main thing here is to seal those where they meet so any overspray is not going to go through the lines where they meet and it looks like a hot mess but this is not made to be beautiful it's made to protect the the fresh paint job from the dark paint because there's no forgiveness on this matte black if there's a crevice in it, it will find it and ruin my blue paint job. So back into the spray booth and just a blast and make sure you get all four edges. That's all. Now there are different theories about unmasking these cars. I gave that another 10 or 15 minutes to set up. It's tacky, but it's not dry because when the tape peels off, I don't want it to take anything with it. So be very careful here, and you'll see me checking my fingers for black paint, because the last thing I want is a big fingerprint of black on my blue paint job. So I'm taking my time, making very sure not to hold wet black tape. And now we get down to the original fine tummy. Look at that. Super nice. Razor sharp. And if you were holding your breath while I did that, thank you. It did not take any blue paint off. Tremendous. I'm very pleased with that. couple more internet picks and I decided that the Corgi Junior wheels just don't fit the real life model and so into the boneyard and I found a couple of these off of a, a Volkswagen bus and they suited the period a little bit better. They're not brand new so I had to just touch them up. Manufactured between 1948 and 1990, more than 3.8 million 2CV sedans were produced. And because of its popularity, the car spawned many variants. The motoring writer LJK Sedright described the 2CV as the most intelligent application of minimalism ever to succeed as a car. <laughs> I think it's a compliment. And if you have been watching this and thinking there are similarities to the renowned Volkswagen Beetle, you're right. Both of them were conceived in the 1930s to make motor cars affordable to regular people for the first time in their countries. Both went into large-scale production in the late 40s, featuring air-cooled boxer engines at the same end as their driven axle, omitting a lengthwise drive shaft riding on the exact same 2.4 meter wheelbase and just like the Beetle the 2CV became not only a million seller but also one of the few cars in history to continue a single generation in production for over four decades. Here's my finished product. I like the blue paint and the wheels are more period correct you can see the exposed chrome now and the rear hatch still functional. Overall, I'm very pleased with that classic car and classic lines. That's the Citroen Dion. Here's what it looked like at the beginning of the process. Canvas top black was rubbed right off and lots of stress marks. It's just play worn and well loved. Baboon. Yes, I like that. That turned out very well and it's still a good roller. So I pop it into a gift bag and it will go to the Goodwill store as a treat, a free gift for a boy or a girl. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, won't you? And subscribe to my channel and come on back often. It's coffee time. <laughs>